This video will explain what audio equalization is. This is not a video for someone who wants to learn what the appropriate settings for EQ are in a given situation. This is a video for someone who doesn't know what an EQ is, or what it's supposed to do, and wants someone to lay it out simply for them. Imagine this white blank screen represents sound. The horizontal line in the middle represents silence. When sound appears, it will be shown going up and down to represent a sound wave. Imagine the skin of a drum. What happens when you strike the drum skin with a stick? Well, the drum skin travels downward, forming a convex pattern, and then it rebounds and forms a concave shape going upward, before heading back down again, and so on. Imagine the shape above representing the downward and upward pattern of movement of the drum skin. Like someone jumping on a trampoline, the skin of the drum moves up and down before returning to the taut center position. What you are seeing is a, a visual representation of that movement. Each movement of the drum skin pushes air and creates sound waves, which are waves of compressed air created by the drum skin, which our ears can sense and interpret. A lower sound appears further to the left of this area where we visualize sound, called a spectrum. We use words to describe a sound like this as deep, bass, heavy, or a low frequency. The lowest sound that a human ear can hear is about 20 hertz which means that the up and down movement occurs 20 times in the space of one second. So a low frequency is a sound that moves slowly or infrequently. Things that are thick, heavy, or slack make low sounds like a gong or a slackened guitar string. They move slowly, relatively speaking, so the sounds that they make vibrate fewer times per second. A higher sound appears further to the right. We say that these sounds are high, treble, bright, or high frequency. A taut guitar string vibrates very quickly, and so the waves of compressed air that are thrown off from its vibration come in quick waves. The highest sound that the human ear can typically hear is 20,000 hertz, or 20 megahertz. So the highest sounds we can hear are 1,000 times faster than the lowest sounds that we can hear. Now, our perception of these frequencies is logarithmic, meaning that the difference between 20 and 40 hertz sounds the same to us as the difference between 10 megahertz and 20 megahertz. We hear each doubling in the speed as equivalent to any other doubling in speed. So 40 hertz is one octave higher than 20 hertz, and 20 megahertz is one octave higher than 10 megahertz, even though the difference numerically between the two is 20 additional cycles per second versus 10,000 additional vibrations per second. We perceive them as the same sort of jump in frequency because they both double. Now that we've talked about sound, we're finally ready to talk about equalizers, which is an audio device or a plugin that modifies sound. Equalizers come in different varieties, and the two most common types are graphic and parametric. A graphic EQ separates the horizontal audio spectrum on the left to right axis into vertical strips called bands. You probably are familiar with two dials on many stereo systems labeled treble and bass. The treble dial 
allows you to adjust the volume of the right half of the spectrum. It makes the high sounds more pronounced, while not affecting the low sounds. The bass dial allows you to adjust low frequencies in the music, while not affecting the treble. In addition to having a single volume knob for all of the sound, you now have two knobs, one to adjust each half of the sound. If we turn up the bass, we will hear more of the drums, the bass guitar, or other sounds that are represented in the low part of the spectrum of sound. If we turn up the treble, we might be able to hear a soprano's voice or a cymbal more clearly. At this point, we need to get something straight. The sound frequencies and the EQ match one another horizontally in this visualization. The low sounds and the bass on the EQ are both represented on the left. The high sounds and the treble are both shown on the right. The difference comes in how the EQ and the actual sounds are represented vertically. Remember, Silence is represented by a flat line in the middle of the visualization. Sounds are represented by up and down waves emerging out of that flat middle line. For the EQ controls, however, silence is represented by the bottom of the visualization. Loudness is represented by the top of the image. The reality and the adjustment of the reality work on two different scales. Hopefully that's fairly intuitive for you. This means that if we lower the bass dial, the sounds get pulled into the middle more tightly. The movement of the dial does not match the change in the shape of the sound as it's represented in the image, and it's just important to keep this straight in your head. A graphic equalizer can have more than just two bands. It can be a multi-band EQ, giving us finer, more granular control over the sound. This means we can focus on particular frequencies. This is a four-band EQ, which means our spectrum is divided into four parts instead of just two. The more bands available, the more specific the adjustments we can make. Another type of EQ is a parametric EQ, named because it defines certain parameters, controlled by knobs, which shape the sound in a more holistic manner. A parametric EQ also has a number of bands, but it often has one to three control knobs to control each band, instead of a single knob or slider to control each band on a graphic EQ. The first control is Gain. This allows you to increase or decrease the effect of the particular band on the sound. Raising the gain on the EQ band creates a bell-shaped bulge upward from the center point out of the line in the middle. For this type of EQ, the flat line in the center is the starting point, just like the actual sound. When we raise the gain, we boost the part of the frequency represented on the image. The largest change is at the center of the bulge, tapering down to the edges until there is no change for the rest of the spectrum. If we lower the gain on the parametric EQ band, then the bulge protrudes downward from the flat middle line, meaning that this portion of the frequency will be cut or made less prominent. When we boost, we are emphasizing certain frequencies. When we cut, we de-emphasize them. The next control is frequency, which fine-tunes what part of the spectrum the EQ band affects. By turning the frequency dial down, we are shifting the bulge in the EQ to the left, affecting lower frequencies. By turning the frequency dial up, we are shifting the bulge in the EQ to the right, affecting higher frequencies. The final control is Q, although it goes by various names. The purpose of this dial 
is to adjust the width of the bulge to make it more or less prominent. By turning the dial down, the affected area becomes narrower. By raising it, the affected area becomes broader. The general rule of thumb is that we want to make narrow cuts and wide boosts. When we raise the EQ gain above the middle, we want that to be a broad, subtle change. When we drop the EQ down below the middle, we want to make a specific surgical removal of only the specific problem in the signal so the sound doesn't feel like too much has been cut out. A good beginner strategy is called boost and sweep. This means raising the gain significantly on a particular EQ band, and then sweeping that boost left and right while listening for differences in the sound. As the bulge passes left and right through the spectrum, you will hear different parts of the sound emphasized. Some points in the spectrum will not seem to change the sound significantly. For some, it will sound better while others will sound awful. Once you have boosted and swept, keep a subtle boost on the good frequencies you identified while making a narrow cut where you heard problems. At the beginning or the end of the spectrum, you may wish to change the shape of a particular band. A bulge may not be the way that you want to change the sound. A shelf EQ shape raises or lowers part of the spectrum from a particular point forward. By adjusting the gain and frequency, you can adjust how much the shelf affects. Gain changes how high or low the shelf will be, while frequency adjusts the point in the spectrum where the shelf begins to make changes to the sound. Another shape that a parametric EQ band can take is a cut or roll-off, or pass. Unlike a shelf, which creates a plateau, a cut uses the frequency knob to determine the point at which changes ought to take place, and then just drops the sound away quickly from that point on. Another name for this type of control is a low pass or a high pass filter. Now this gets confusing because a low cut allows the higher frequencies to pass unhindered, while a high cut allows low frequencies to pass by unchanged. These are two perspectives on the same question. The question is whether you are focused on what is cut away or what is left over and allowed to pass through, glass half empty or glass half full. Here is a real world example of what we've been talking about. This is the EQ setting that I created for this video, and it shows how my voice has been affected. On the left, there is a low cut, the red dot, taking out frequencies that are too low for the human voice to eliminate unnecessary noise. In the middle are two boosts, the yellow dot and the green dot, picking two places that give resonance and clarity to my voice. And on the right is a high shelf, the uh, cyan dot. And that will boost all of the high frequencies to make me sound a little more present and closer to the listener. Along the bottom, you can see three dials for each of the bands, and you can adjust the dials or just grab the dots in the image and shift them where you like. In the background, you can see a bar graph that shows a real-time analysis of where my voice falls in the spectrum. So that's what an EQ is. Now, you want to know what to do with an EQ, but that's beyond the scope of this video. The purpose here is to give you a strong sense for what an EQ does, so that you can visualize and imagine what changes will occur when you start turning dials learning which frequencies are important and which particular instruments and voices need to be adjusted via EQ is a challenging subject. There are many videos out there with specific advice you might want to use, and there are many opinions as to the best approach. The purpose of this video has been to give you a framework that will allow you as a rank beginner to understand the advice given in those other videos. Thanks for watching.